I decided to set out and find a believer or a witness of UFOs that had an abduction experience. What I discovered wound up to be more than I could ever have imagined. I started to believe in either the fourth or fifth grade. I just got interested in aliens after reading some astronomy books because I was interested in astronomy at that point and there were little segments about extraterrestrial life. I would then start to study aliens and the amount of evidence was overwhelming to me. I then considered myself a ufologist and an enthusiast. People who believe in aliens and UFOs are very open-minded and intelligent. People who push that aliens are here right now and those who think UFOs are constantly landing across the globe, I can be sort of doubtful about that stuff. I believe that it could have possibly happened before, but that would be pretty rare. I believe it though, if it has plenty of evidence. In 1984, me and my son were both abducted at the same time, and we were taken aboard a ship. As we floated through the wall, we could see a great big ship, and it was maybe about 40 or 50 feet across and 30 feet tall, and it was your typical UFO flying saucer with red and blue lights that were strobing around the top of it. And we were floating up this blue ray up into the bottom of the ship, and I could see these telephone lines coming up in front of us, so we passed through them, and it was just like our whole body was tingling when we went through them. I can't discount alien visitation. I do have to admit, though, it would be highly unlikely. We just really are not that interesting. When someone, when someone contacts me and asks me to do an investigation, usually they are looking for verification of things that they've experienced. What they are looking for then is pictures of things that I've come across, hard evidence. Um, they want primarily proof that they're not crazy. The ones that usually come and get most people that are the most frightening are what they call the greys. And the greys are about three feet tall. Uh, they're the typical ones that you see on TV little short gray beings with long skinny arms and skinny legs and uh, big heads and the wraparound eyes. The grays are the ones that people are scared of the most because they are like these guys that come in and do the preliminary work, so to speak. That there's the, what they call praying mantis, which are very similar to the kind of bugs that you look at, except they're really huge, they're maybe eight or nine feet tall. They're uh, they're some of the most benevolent beings you're going to run across in the universe. And then there would be another one that a lot of people call the reptilians. With the reptilians, they are like a big lizard, basically, and some of them are very warlike. Sometimes the explanation is something very logical. You're hearing a tapping in the basement. Well, if you go down and you investigate in the basement, you might find that there is a vibration in the, um, in the furnace and there's a wire touching it. That would cause the tapping. Paranormal investigations and UFO sightings and abductions are the same in that many people scoff at them and, and people that have experienced these things are ridiculed. Treating it as a novelty is okay, but when it gets to the point where you're really ridiculing individuals who've had experiences, and I've been on this end of the ship, where everybody has ridiculed me and uh, called me every name you can believe in the book, and I have a hard time understanding why they would do that simply because I've had an experience. I think it's borders on a form of almost racism type of thing. People who don't believe, they are stuck in their day-to-day -day routines, their day-to-day -day activities and the things that they do in their life. And it's a hard concept for a lot of people to understand. And they get scared to have to admit that there's something out there that's bigger than them. Abductions seem to be something that has happened since the 1950s when Hollywood started coming out with all of the the science fiction movies with the, with the cigar-shaped rocket that goes off someplace else. 
Oh, I think it has become sort of fascinating in the movie industry. And I think the movie industry is huge in promoting UFOs. I mean, some of the biggest blockbuster movies of all time, Star Wars, E.T., Independence Day, some of these movies have been just major blockbusters and it has sort of ingrained it into the U.S. culture. As many sightings as were reported, there were probably double that that actually happened because of our tendency to look at something that we don't understand and not want anyone else to think that we're crazy when we talk about it. Now, out of every one that you hear, there's probably 20 that have happened that you don't hear. I think these other people that have abductions have got a traumatic experience. And uh, what it does to you, if you're not aware of this kind of a situation, then all of a sudden you remember what's happened. There, it's very traumatic because it shakes the very reality of what you know and what you understand exists. There's a post-traumatic stress disorder that is very real that affects people. It affected me for a number of years. And if you saw a, a UFO, who would you report it to? Where would you call? I created the UFO Encounters Group as a means for people to come together who've had experiences and be able to talk in an environment that's private that they're going to be able to feel comfortable in and I needed to step out and really help others who've had this kind of experiences. I think that an abductee support group actually would be a very good thing. Um, these obviously are people that feel that they are not being heard and they are ridiculed, sometimes even by family members. Something happened to them and if there's a support group, perhaps it will, they will reach a place where they're comfortable enough to be able to speak and to resolve their issue with a sighting or an abduction or whatever they had. But it's simply a matter of allowing the space and the time for somebody to come to terms with it. If you're in here, is there anything you'd like to say to us? This is Puritans, as far as they took their restrictions. It was all based on belief and became abuse. So belief in aliens, belief in the paranormal. I don't know that I'm there, but I'm willing to look at it and evaluate what I find. I think they're just like human beings. Human beings can be friendly and they can be very, very cruel. But I believe it's a multi-dimensional universe where they can transpose themselves from one universe to, well, one dimension to another. And uh, they are certainly capable of doing this based upon the technology that they possess because if they're a million years farther advanced than us, which could very well be possible, they're going to have technology that's going to be able to do things that would seem like magic to us. I believe aliens are every bit as likely as, as anything paranormal. I think that the reason that they're fascinated with humans is because we are them, okay, and they are us. It's in the beginning sometime back in time, I believe they probably placed us here and that there are ancestors and they're curious about how we are doing as a species. This if this planet is the only place that there is intelligent life, and there's a whole universe out there, it really would be a waste of space. And I'd be awfully lonely.